How's it going, everyone? I'm Brother Dave here from Rod of Iron. Uh, coming up here with a, uh, just want to give a short little uh, commendation to some individuals, to a group rather. The other day I was on Facebook and my account is, is dormant most of the year, but I, I log on periodically from time to time just to see what's brewing. And what came across my feed was something from, uh, posted by, by the official page, the official Facebook page of St. Francis High School in Wheaton, Illinois, which is, of course, my, my alma mater. Uh, I did not graduate from there, but I did attend there for, for three years, almost four, uh, from, from 2013 to 17, or 16, rather. <clears throat> and I saw that they posted that uh, there's a group of students there who attended the, the uh, March for Life anti-abortion, anti-baby murder march in, uh, in Washington, D.C. just the other day. And, you know, it really, it, 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 it was a surprise to me to see that. Now, a very welcome surprise at that. Uh, but when I was at Francis, Francis was known, there were two Catholic high schools in, in the area. Of course, there was Bennett and St. Francis. And Bennett was known as the more conservative uh, Catholic school, you know, you had to, uh, I think you actually had to be practicing Catholic to even uh, be admitted to the school. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have even gotten into the front door at, past my freshman year. <laughs> but St. Francis was known sort of as, as more of a liberal school, theologically. I mean, the religion department was a shambles, even even by Catholic standards, and I'll get into that. <clears throat> but, I mean, they were openly pro-sodomy, you know, like, like uh, Michael Page, that little f effeminate little Fruit Loop pushing sodomy on the school children, telling them how great it is, going in detail about how great it is. That guy's definitely a closet homo in a sham marriage that you say what's a sodomite it's a homosexual that's what a sodomite is and it, it's an abomination to god almighty and he destroyed two cities sodom and gomorrah because of it and he holds them up in the new testament as as an example of what not to do in a society <clears throat> the religion department at saint francis when i was there uh even even were even very tacitly pro-abortion. They didn't seem to have an issue with it. And <clears throat> anyone who went to that school, who was even marginally conservative, let alone a saved Bible-believing Christian like myself, uh, you'd be picked on. And not just by the students. Actually, the most of my peers were, were uh, <clears throat> pretty easygoing, as far as I can remember. But I'm talking about the faculty. If you didn't toe that line of pro-sodomy and pro-baby murder, then you'd be in for it. Now, I understand that they've got Catholic priests teaching the religion class now and all, <clears throat> in an effort to you know, make it more socially conservative. And I'll get into that a little bit. You see... I want to, <coughs> excuse me, as I said, commend the group of students that were there that went out to D.C. to stand against baby murder. God bless you. You did a good thing. Now, to my regular audience, don't worry. I'm not holding hands with the Catholic Church. I'm not going ecumenical. I'm not going Billy Graham on you, okay? <laughs> but I will give credit where credit's due. And it does seem that the school administratively at least, is starting to lean more theologically and socially conservative in an effort to actually, well, give the parents what they're paying for. I mean, they're paying for a, a socially conservative education. And so 
we're not going they're not going behind the parents back anymore teaching a bunch of satanic crap they're actually you know being above board now with the parents it looks like and and but with that being said as i said i know that <clears throat> students if you're listening to this many of you are are in religion class it, many of you if not all of you are in the religion classes there at, at saint francis under the the teachings of a catholic priest now let me tell you something they might be right on abortion right on marriage or some other issue but that's about all they're right on they will lie to you they're lying to you about your your eternal soul and salvation you see you don't go to heaven by being a good person by being a good catholic by uh, uh, cleaning your life up, taking the sacraments, like they'll tell you, taking communion, going to Mass. That's not how you get to heaven. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 The Bible says that, <coughs> excuse me, that, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 15 and 16. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ himself said. He said that he that believeth on me hath, right now, present tense, everlasting life, John 6, 47. And that by grace are ye saved through faith, the Bible says, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I preached a whole sermon on that if you want to go back uh, just recently, <coughs> just this last month, in fact. I preached a sermon on this channel entitled uh, The Roman Catholic Church versus the Book of Romans, where, where I went through just one book of the Bible, one book of the New Testament, the Book of Romans, uh, uh, to, to prove indisputably that we are saved. We go to heaven not by works, not by going to church, not by taking communion, not by any of that, not by baptism, not by turning from sins, but by believing in the, and trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that is what bought our salvation, the Bible says. That him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, that's Jesus Christ, his faith is counted for righteousness. That God is just, and the justifier of him with, which believeth in Jesus. That means he saves you. All your sins are gone in his eyes because you have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is by faith. That's what the Bible says. And I just, in that sermon, I, I only went to the book of Romans, but you could go to literally any book in the New Testament, and it's all corroborating that exact same point via uh, the book of Romans, book of John, uh, Ephesians, Galatians, anywhere in the New Testament, and, and, and even many places in the Old Testament <coughs> are all corroborating this truth. That it is an eternal gift. You can't lose it. You can't lose your salvation. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. John 10, 28. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I and my Father are one. It's easy, my friends. And if you're not completely convinced of that, that fact... I encourage you to listen to that sermon of mine out of the book of Romans. <clears throat> but again, students, as I said, I wanted to commend you for standing up against the wickedness, the satanic sin of abortion, murdering innocent unborn babies, <clears throat> the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and so on and so forth. Abortion sheds innocent blood. The blood of innocent unborn babies in the mother's womb, which ought to be the safest, safest place on earth for, for them. And our nation is under a curse from God because of it. For tolerating and promoting that wickedness. And so, 
Students of St. Francis, I wanted to congratulate you. I wanted to encourage you. Keep standing for the truth. <clears throat> First of all, get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, that <clears throat> whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, it can't be that easy. It is that easy. Romans 10, 9 spells it out, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And God's not an Indian giver, friend. He's not going to take your salvation away. It's eternal. That means it lasts forever. But anyway, I'm not going to re-preach my, uh, my salvation sermon right now. I wanted, to I wanted to encourage you to keep standing. Thank you for standing for righteousness and truth. But keep doing so. Don't let anyone bully you and tell you that you're not like Jesus. Hey, I know Jesus. You can too if you get saved. If you trust in him and him alone to save you, you can know him too. You might think you do, but if you're trusting in that Catholic system, you don't. <coughs> but if you get saved, friend, born again by the Spirit of God, you'll know Jesus as I do. And I can open a Bible. My friends, a, a beautiful, powerful King James Bible and tell you what Jesus actually said. Those atheist reprobates who... who want to bully you and try to shut you down and say you're not like Jesus, they don't even believe the Bible anyway. They don't even believe the words of Christ. So nuts to them. <clears throat> we need more young people taking a stand for the word of God in this lost and dying world. Don't apologize. Don't even debate with these, these freaks. Stand your ground. Double down. Say yes. I'm against baby murder. Yes. Ripping a baby apart is a sin, an abomination against God, the same as murder. Or worse. Because it's an innocent child in the mother's womb. Don't let them walk all over you. Stand your ground. I want to encourage you to do that, my friends. And you know what? You can stand your ground in other areas, too. Don't give in to peer pressure. And let me tell you something. Going out and, and partying with your classmates and drinking a bunch of liquor and blacking out drunk, let me tell you, there's nothing cool about that. You know what you'll get? It's called a hangover. They're not fun. And look, I know that liquor is floating around those, floating around that school probably even more so than in the public school because your parents have the money to, to buy more of it. And kids are getting into mom and dad's liquor cabinet and well, doesn't doesn't take much to figure out the rest. Hey, there's nothing cool about puking your guts out and blacking out drunk and having a headache the whole rest of the next day. <laughs> and doing stupid stuff that you're going to regret. Hey, look. You don't have to fornicate. There's nothing cool about that. That's a sin. You say, what's fornication? Fornication <clears throat> is going to bed with someone who you're not married to. It's a sin. You say, well, I go to hell for it? No, you won't go to hell for it if you believe on Christ. There's nothing you can do to go to hell at that point. But you know what? He, God will chasten you for it here on this earth. I know the peer pressure's there. It's tough not to give in. <clears throat> you young ladies who might be listening to this. 
you say, well, my boyfriend, you know, he, he, he loves me. I, I, I need to give him what he wants. Hey, if he loves you, ladies, <coughs> he can wait and he can put a ring on it. Don't give your body away like that. Some high school boyfriend. He's not going to commit to you till death do you part. You're worth more than that, ladies. <coughs> Flee fornication, the Bible says. I wanted to encourage you all that what you did going to the March for Life, let me tell you, that's cool. Standing for righteousness and truth is cool. You guys are the counterculture. The pro-homos and the, the pro-baby uh, murder advocates. Nothing cool about them. I mean, that's mainstream. That's what we have in the White House right now. Nothing cool about that. Nothing counterculture about that. Believe in the book. That's counterculture. That's cool. Take it from someone who's been there. God bless you all. Have a great day.